everybody okay it's finished and it's amazing it turned out so pretty i had no idea it would turn out this nice okay so the trick to getting those squares getting those tiles to marry up to their partner properly is steamacine steamacine 2 or steamacine light either one will work the trick to steamacine is you need to heat up the fabric you're going to put it on first and get that hot and then put the steamacine on it right away before it cools and then real quick with the iron right across it no steam no steam at all even though it's called steamacine don't steam it because you don't want to shrink the fabric and then peel that up while it's still warm otherwise it's a bear to get off it shreds the paper shreds let it cool completely and then place the pieces next to it you know marry up those lines and everything the patterns perfectly heat it again on no steam ever just press it and heat it don't swish just press okay give it a good press let it cool completely then when you go to flip it over and you want to sew a seam together and this is really the way i did it for the long the long vertical uh putting the four rows together i took a piece of parchment paper and slipped it underneath the seam so that the steam seam doesn't stick to itself and get all make a big sticky mess and sewed it where I knew it needed to be sewn right on that black line that is the basting box around each tile right just barely like one thread width inside of that and then um, open up when you get finished you want to open up those seams because you want to press your seams open and if it's difficult because the steam seam has it kind of gluey heat it up just a little bit again and make the glue soft and then it'll peel apart easier then put the parchment paper on it and give it an iron that's what i did for this whole thing and it worked great okay you can really maneuver the fabric and work in ease and all of that when you are doing it that way you don't have to that's the way i did it this is the way i'm going to show you how i did it and uh, and then I go through how I finished uh, backing it and putting the binding on. So I hope you enjoy the rest of this. To put the individual tiles together, I would uh, create a fold on the black line, on the black basting box. I used a little piece of cardboard as a line to uh, press up against. If you have got one of those seam presser boards, those work well. Metal or there, I know Dritz makes one. And just heat, no steam. And uh, just folded that up on there so that I could just barely see the black line, the black stitch line. And that was going to be, that fold now is going to fit right up against the tile above it. So you want to heat the fabric, get it nice and hot, and then put the steam seam right underneath this black basting line on the box above it, the tile above it, and tear it off, and then use the iron again real quickly to attach that steam seam. And while it's still warm, you want to hold down the sticky part and pull the tape off. If you wait for it to cool, it will give you uh, some fits, but it comes off pretty easy like that. And then you can take the piece and exactly match where those stitch lines need to be. Don't, don't worry about the basting box lines. Get them as close as you can, but you want those stitch lines to be right on and then hold them together real good. And you want to let that fully cool before you go take it to the sewing machine and sew it out. So I continued to do this process with all of the tiles to create the vertical rows. 
once you get them all sewn together and you want to sew just inside that line, you can open up the seams and it may help to heat up the glue a little bit and then use a piece of parchment paper to uh, press the seams open. You want to use parchment paper so you don't get your, your um, iron all gluey. But uh, yeah, just kind of peel them apart a little bit, press them down flat, and then use parchment paper and your iron and press them down really flat. And that's going to give you a nice, smooth row with minimal seams in the design. And what you end up with is something very pretty and everything's all lined up like it's supposed to be. It looks great. Now, you can see the letters, there's like no uh, transition. Okay, I still have some steam -a seam on these and so I can see the line on the back of the stabilizer. I ended up using white stabilizer because the black that I ordered was um, too narrow. I ordered the wrong stuff. So I ended up using white and it really wasn't a problem. And someone had made a comment about uh, using, that they had actually called the company about using the poly mesh versus the clean and tear, two layers of clean and tear, like the directions say. And they said that it's gonna come out about the same, but it would have a lighter hand. And that would be true, except, this is where that steam seam is. That would be true, except we have got fusible woven on the back of this. So we've really kind of um, taken care of that. Okay. <laughs> My ironing board is hot. I'm trying to get this pressed. It's easier for me to see the line if I sit down right in front of my ironing board and um, get down at eye level with it. first glance like it was gonna be okay and then you just kind of have to pull these apart and it works it can be tricky but it works If they're a little difficult to get apart because of the steam -a seam, then just warm it up and it will uh, come apart a little bit easier if the glue's a little warm. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how we did. Pretty. 
pretty good. There's that bubble, and there's the E. I'm liking that. Let me get up close right here. You see that? How those are lined up just right? The E is a stitch or so. Um, it's fine. I'm not going to mess with it. And the bubble is almost perfect. So, yeah, that turned out great. I like it. That turned out really good. One more here on this side, and it'll be ready to get its backing. I'm not going to put any batting in it, I don't think. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it as is. I'm not going to quilt it in the ditch. I'm not going to do a thing. I'm just going to put a backing on it and a binding. You've got to match up these tiny, tiny little string pieces right down here. And then the candle ring part and the flame up here. I'm going to put my pins, I can see the back of that stitch line for the candle ring. I'm going to put my pins on either side of it because I know that I need to make sure that those stay in place. And same with this one, right below the candle ring, over to the machine. Let's see how we did. All right, let's see what we got. Everything turned out perfect except so these candle rings right here turned out great this one is a stitch off and I don't know if I'm gonna mess with that or not the holly pieces the pine pieces turned out perfect the flame I'm not even gonna mess with that I'm not gonna kill myself the flame turned out absolutely perfect this the little bubble turned out great yeah that turned out great. And from a distance, if I wanted to take a piece of gold thread and stick it in there, I guess I could. But right now, I'm going to leave it as is. Matter of fact, if I pull it, no, it is, it is right. Ha-ha! I just need to iron it from the front. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, this is just so pretty. Oh, I should put parchment paper under here. I got gluey stuff. Oh, that turned out great. Yeah. This is a job, you guys. Oh, man. Oh, but it turned out really nice. Oh, I got a shiny spot. I got so excited I didn't use my uh, <laughs> all my pressing tools. Really looks great. I like it. Look. What do you think? Good enough for government work. I'll be proud to hang that in my house. That's really pretty. Beautiful. Okay, time for the backing. I'm just going to bind. I'm going to back this and bind it just like a regular quilt. I will not use any batting in it at all and uh, just going to put the backing on it and put it together with the binding. I need to even up the sides and then I think... I don't know if I'm going to put a sleeve on the back or how I'm going to do it, but it's finished. So, and then, yeah, just do it like a regular quilt. i got to find my fabric. Okay, so here's what's left of the fabric from the original three-yard piece. I told you guys three yards was enough, more than enough. And... Um, let me use this. I'm just going to lay it on top to measure. I'm going to cut them at the same time. Yeah. Conserve fabric. Here's everything else over here. This is going to be for uh, 
binding. I have a bunch of other strips. Let me move up. I have some other strips from cutting off of the hoopings and uh, just ended up not needing it. So I am going to use KK2000, which is a sulky product, and I'm going to spray baste this to the backing. KK2000 does not give you a funky smell. Doesn't bother me anyway, but not much does, so. Perfect, that looks good. Okay. this up and I'm going to leave a quarter inch seam allowance outside of the bubbles here. I'm going to go ahead and do some pins in this because I am not going to be putting it on the long arm. Even though I have spray basted, it, I'm still going to put these pins because, you know, it shifts and I don't want to deal with that. And I'm going to machine bind this. I will stitch my binding to the front, fold it over to the back, and then stitch in the ditch from the front. That's how I do all of my machine bindings. And you will not see it at all because of the color, obviously. But it'll look great if you want to try that method. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty successful with it because I have the Brother PQ1500 sewing machine which is a piecing machine and it has a very tight presser foot to the face plate if you do not have that kind of machine I would recommend reaching up and you want to do that method reach up on top of your machine and tighten the presser foot down just a little bit uh, test it you know until you're comfortable that's going to make a huge difference in um, in the accuracy of your of your stitching from the front huge difference holds that fabric nice and tight all right this looks good okay when i do my binding i have um a two and a half inch strip that's what i like to do and i have uh it's folded in half and pressed and then this is the Brother PQ1500 machine, and I just stitch it on with a quarter inch seam allowance. I don't, um, I leave about a 12 inch tail or so, and I start about two thirds of the way down on the right side of a project here. I move my thread and everything out of the way. You won't be able to see it too well because it's black on black, but trust me here. I do back stitch at the beginning. And I leave this 12 inch tail because I like to do a diagonal seam finish when I'm done. So I do a, um, a technique I learned from Janet Prey of Islander Sewing Systems to prevent the bottom from being pulled through faster than the strip on the top. Lay them both together. You do thumb under, fingers on top, and fold it like this. And if you just keep, keep that in your head, I'll do it again real slow. I'll put thumb under, fingers on top, smooth it out right, and, and do this, and make kind of an S, and fold the top of your knuckles down toward the machine, 
and that prevents the bottom fabric from being pulled through faster than the top. That's a trick that they do in industry so that um, they don't have to use pins because it takes too much time in industry to use pins. And I like this machine because there is a quarter inch seam line right here or the, that comes out perpendicular to the needle so that tells me when this corner gets to that quarter inch seam line I can stop. Right there, back up. Okay, I have a knee lift, and that's what that's what lifted my presser foot. And I just fold this back level. And if you're not sure, you can put it down to if you have um, one of those ruler lines, then this fold this out flat like this and make sure it's straight and then I just fold it back over my fingers straight crease it down just like that okay it's perfect and hold it still I start a little bit in and go backwards first go forward okay I'm trying to turn this so the pins are to the insides sorry <laughs> so I don't get stuck Okay, lay that on flat. You don't want to tug it and stretch it because that'll bubble your project. You just want to lay it flat, thumb under, fingers on top, and fold it forward. And I use my left hand to guide it from the back. I can do about six or seven inches and then stop and readjust and keep going. This is a very, very quick way to do Okay, and then I normally will stop. I'll give myself about 10 inches of space. We'll stop like right here by that sparkle. Perfect. Okay, back stitch and cut. And pull out these pins. Don't need them anymore, so we don't need the chance of getting stuck. Okay. So the way I finish my binding, it's very simple and easy to do. I'm going to lay this piece out and the tail that I started with, I'm going to, I think I'm going to make my connection like right here. And so I'm just going to cut it. Okay. Just cut it right there. That gives me enough to work with right there. Okay. And then lay this piece, it's going to be hard to see guys because it's black. Lay this piece, you want to open it up, okay, open it up. And I'm going to put it perpendicular to my tail and I'm going to move it into the gap about an eighth of an inch. I've, I've found I have a better outcome with an eighth of an inch right here. I don't know if you can see that, okay. So it's perpendicular, this is the piece I just cut off perpendicular to the binding I opened it up and I have put it right up against the edge and there's an eighth of an inch right here and then I'm going to take this piece of the binding and lay it over the top and I'm going to cut it right at the outer edge of that one see it didn't even scare me <laughs> now now what you do is you take the piece on the left and you lay it out flat like that and you take the piece on the right and you open it up and you turn it toward you one full revolution. Okay, I'll do that again. Piece on the left, lay it out flat. Piece on the right, open it up with the right side up. This is the crease in the fold, right side up. Turn it toward you one full revolution. Okay, and now I'm going to put them together corner to corner and pin corner to corner and I'm gonna make sure that the edges are straight here on this end and then I'm gonna pin this corner down here and now I'm gonna sew on the diagonal from this point down to this point like this okay that out flat. 
I'm sewing on the diagonal, starting right on that corner. When you use this kind of machine, you don't need a, lead, uh, a leader or an ender because it's a single needle hole faceplate. Now I've got this um, quarter inch seam tape here and I'm going to put that point of the one on the bottom on the red, which is the straight line seam. It's called diagonal seam tape. And I'm just going to follow that. I can see the bottom piece right here, that point. I'm going to hold this on it flat. I'm going to follow that point up the red line so I know it's straight. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to pull these, and I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch seam. I haven't even measured it, guys. You didn't see me use a measuring tape at all. Watch. It's perfect, and it fits great. Love this method. So easy, so quick, and I'm just finger pressing that seam. And now I'm going to start back up here. Thumb under, fingers on top. Get this. Finish it up. See, even with an eighth of an inch, I probably could have gone a little bit more. If you get a little tuck, it's not that big of a deal if it's on the inside and not on the outside. So I'm just pushing it with my fingers flat. Let me see. Nope, you cannot see it at all in the seam line, that little tuck. That's perfect. Okay, so my diagonal seam is finished. And now I'm going to take it to the ironing board and iron out uh, my my uh, binding straight. Okay, so I just got back from the ironing board and I have pressed this flat against there. How did I get white thread in there? I'm going to take a sharpie to that. <laughs> I think I had problems with my multi-needle at one time. Okay, so I just pop these corners over and it doesn't matter where I start or stop, but I'll probably do it on a side. And I'm just going to fold this over. If you have a little bit of the basting line of it, uh, visible and you don't want that, you can always pick it out. I personally don't care. Okay, I have folded that under. I can see just a tiny bit of the edge of the binding through the presser foot and off I go. I am stitching in the ditch and I just fold this over like this. I can hear it when I get um, when it's not right, but so far so good. So when I come to a corner, what I do is I fold this down, I put one pin like this, and then I fold the 90 and get the point even, get the miter corner nice, and fold this and pin it so that the miter is pretty. right into that corner. And one more. Yeah. Turn it, pull my pin. Needle down on the turn. Fold this under. That looks great. Let me zoom in and see if you can see this. Can you see that? That's what it looks like on the back. 
So the corner has a nice miter right there and the seam allowance, I mean, it's like a anywhere between a quarter or a little less. It is not perfect. It's on the back. I don't care. This seems like it's going quick, but guys, I've been doing this so long. Um, it, it is pretty quick. I mean, I've been doing it for years, though. The accuracy from this machine is incredible. I'm not going to do a sleeve on this. This is going to be the... Um, I'll just use the magnetic quilt hanger that I have up behind me here. I'll use that. And here's the tail from where we started. All right. It is finished. Yay! Oh, and it looks great. Okay. So this is what the backing looks like when it is machine bound. And I caught everything. That's why I use a wider two and a half inch strip to make sure that you catch it on the back side. And it looks great. Look at that perfect miter. Didn't that come out real nice? I like that. Yep, looks good. Okay, it is finished. It is ready to be hung. So excited. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun and it is a beautiful wall hanging. And uh, I wanna thank all of you for sewing along with me. I love our sew alongs. They keep me from having UFOs. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.